Okay, so are you ready to dive into the world of AI? Always ready to dive into the world of AI. It seems like every day there's a new headline about AI. Right, and it's not always good headlines. Exactly. It's a mix of amazing breakthroughs and some head-scratching moments that make you wonder. Like what were they thinking? Precisely. And we've got a whole collection of those head-scratching moments for you today. I do love a good head-scratcher. So let's start with something that really caught my eye. Um, the Irish Post Office is releasing AI-generated stamps. AI-generated stamps. That's oh, a new one. Right. And wait for it. They're also NFTs. Okay. Now that's just trying to do too much NFTs on stamps. It's like they couldn't decide whether to appeal to... Philalists or crypto bros. Maybe they're hoping those two groups have more overlap than we think. Maybe they do. But it does make you wonder, what exactly is an AI artist anyway? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Because the Irish post office is calling the person behind these stamps. An AI artist. Her name is Kazuya Yuman. So is she the artist or is the AI the artist or is it some kind of collaboration? Right. And if anyone can just type a few words into an AI and get a piece of art, does that devalue the work of human artists? That's what a lot of artists are worried about, especially after that whole controversy with the AI-generated artwork winning that fine art competition. Oh, yeah, the whole theater d'opera spatial debacle. That case really stirred up the art world. And now Jason Allen, the guy who submitted the AI-generated artwork, is claiming copyright infringement. He's saying people are stealing his AI art. But isn't the whole point of AI art that it can be easily replicated? That's the thing. The U.S. Copyright Office has said... AI-generated images can't be copyrighted because there's no human authorship. So it's like trying to copyright a sunset. Exactly. And to make matters even more complicated, another artist, John Lewis, claimed he recreated a very similar image using Midjourney in just 10 seconds. 10 seconds. So much for originality. Right. It really mm. throws into question what we even consider art in the age of AI. It's a whole new world and the rules are still being written. And the courts are trying to catch up. Remember that case with Stephen Thaler who tried to copyright AI generated artwork? Oh yeah, he ended up in court with a judge who was completely baffled by his argument. I think her reaction pretty much sums up how a lot of us feel about this whole AI art thing. It's a lot to wrap your head around. That's for sure. Huh. But it's not just about art. AI is popping up everywhere and it's not always a pretty picture. You're telling me the FTC has entered the chat and they are not happy about some of the things they're seeing. Let's just say some people are using AI to bend the rules mm -hmm. and the FTC is not having it. Remember that whole robot lawyer thing? Don't outpay. Yeah, them. Yeah, they were all over the news promising to get you out of parking tickets and fight all your legal battles for you. But it turned out their robot lawyer was basically just chat GPT in disguise. Yeah, the FTC wasn't too happy about that. They called it out as false advertising, I right? Trade up. And honestly, it's the tip of the iceberg. The FTC is dealing with a ton of AI scams these days. Like what? Give us the rundown. Oh, you've got everything from those fake Amazon storefronts promising to make you rich with AI-powered passive income. Ugh, those drive me crazy. Me too. And then there are the AI writing assistants that are churning out bogus product reviews and manipulating search engine rankings. It's scary how convincing some of these scams can be. Oh. It makes you wonder how many people are out there getting duped by these AI hucksters. A lot. It preys on our desire for easy solutions. We want a magic button to solve all our problems, and AI seems like the perfect magic button, at least to some people. And it's not always harmless, yeah. right? We can't forget about that case in Australia where a social worker was using chat GPT for child protection reports. Oh, yeah, that was a rough one. I mean, using AI to write up reports about vulnerable children, that's a whole other level of ethical gray area. What were they thinking? I honestly don't know if they thought it through, but it really highlights the dangers of blindly trusting AI, especially in situations where human judgment is so critical. So what happened? Did they at least try to fix the situation? Yeah, the Victorian Information Commissioner stepped in and banned ChatGPT within the entire department. They also blocked access to a bunch of other commercial chatbots. Probably a smart move. Definitely. Better safe than sorry, especially when it comes to something as sensitive as child protection. But it does make you wonder, how do we prevent these kinds of situations from happening again? It's a tough one. Because on the one hand, we want to be open to the potential benefits of AI. But on the other hand, we need to be really careful about setting boundaries and ensuring that it's being used responsibly. Exactly. And that's a conversation that we need to be having across all sectors, not just in government or tech. Because as AI becomes more powerful and more pervasive, these ethical dilemmas are only going to become more common and more complex. 
You know what else is becoming more common? AI in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Hollywood's got a serious case of AI fever right now. Speaking of Hollywood, have you heard about this Lionsgate deal? Lionsgate? What have they done now? They just sold their entire movie catalog to an AI video startup. Wait, really? Their whole catalog? That's wild. Yeah, and not just to any AI startup. This one is called Runway. Runway, I've heard of them. They're mm -hmm. the ones who are all about using AI to revolutionize filmmaking. Exactly. They're developing all sorts of tools that allow you to manipulate video footage with AI. So basically giving filmmakers the power to create anything they can imagine. Pretty much. But it makes you wonder, what does this mean for the future of filmmaking? Are we going to see movies written, directed, and edited entirely by AI? It's definitely a possibility, and some people are excited about the potential of AI to democratize filmmaking. Democratize filmmaking. Yeah, the idea is that with AI, anyone could potentially make a movie, even if they don't have millions of dollars or a team of Hollywood professionals. Interesting. But I can't help but think about all the amazing artists and technicians whose jobs could be replaced by AI. Right. It's a double-edged sword for sure. On the one hand, AI has the potential to make filmmaking more accessible and affordable. On the other hand, it could lead to job losses and a devaluation of human creativity. It's that classic tension between technological advancement and its impact on society. Exactly. And it's not just happening in Hollywood. AI is poised to disrupt pretty much every industry out there. It's true. AI is everywhere you look these days, from the art world to the legal system to the entertainment industry. And it's only going to become more prevalent in the years to come. So where does that leave us? I guess the big question is, what role do we want AI to play in our lives? It's up to us to decide how we want to use this technology, whether we use it for good or for ill or maybe a little bit of both. Because AI is a tool, and like any tool, it can be used for creative or destructive purposes. Precisely. So I think the most important thing is that we stay informed. We need to be aware of the potential benefits and risks of AI so that we can make informed decisions about its development and deployment. I completely agree. We need to approach AI with a healthy dose of curiosity and caution. Absolutely, because the future of AI is ultimately in our hands. It's been quite a journey exploring the wild world of AI with you today. It has been fascinating and a little bit terrifying at times. That pretty much sums it up. But hey! That's the world we live in yeah, now, yeah. a world where AI is no longer a futuristic fantasy, but a very real and rapidly evolving part of our daily lives. And who knows what the future holds for AI. But one thing's for sure, it's going to be an interesting ride. That's for sure. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive into the world of AI. As always, thanks for joining us on this wild ride. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay ahead of the AI curve.